Um, thank you for joining from wherever you may be located in the world. Today we'll be discussing Boolean search basic training. So this is kind of a, a 101, if you will, uh, for different search techniques. Uh, just a quick overview on me. Uh, I am on our sourcing science team. I'm a recruitment sourcing executive with over 19 years of full recruitment life experience for all various levels and all sorts of different disciplines that I have recruited for as well. Um, so just a, that's a little bit about me. If you want to connect on LinkedIn, always happy to as well. Before we begin, I will be showing different results of searches. And I always want to put out there that search engines are very particular based upon your location, uh, your search history, historical user data, like your cache, uh, different searches you've run previously, websites you've gone to. So if there are results that are going to differ between what I have and what you have, do not be concerned with that. It's just based upon the, the algorithms for the different job board, or excuse me, for the different uh, search engines and how they do. So this is something that you will be playing with and, and going along with. To start, I wanted to start off with a poll question. So as you can see, I have our IBM flag poll, which is identifying that we're going to have a poll question. So uh, Deb, if you can open that up. And Deb, are you able to talk through this with the audience for me? I'm sorry, I was talking on mute. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, so the quick poll question is, when you search for resumes, what tools do you use? Select that all apply. Uh, one is search engine, so Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc. cetera. Um, the ATS, CRM, Aviture, LinkedIn, social media, meetup groups, and user groups, and five other. So go ahead and you can select all at this time. And it doesn't look like I am able to select any of them, Keith. Well, that doesn't sound very good. <laughs> all right. But it looks like people did were able to do it. Maybe it was because I was a, an organizer. Uh, so we do have yeah, okay. some, yeah, we do have some poll results coming in. Um, right now it says 66% uh, go to search engines. 76% use their uh, searches in the applicant tracking system. 69% uh, search for resumes in the CRM tool. 92%, not surprised, uh, search for resumes on LinkedIn, social media, meetup groups, and user groups, and 30% said other. Great, great. So it sounds like our, our audience has a nice background. So hopefully today's conversation will just enhance those tools that they're already using as, as a starting point. So that is great. So we'll move on to the next slide here. All right, so very basic. Again, as I said, this is a little bit of a 101. So we're going to start off with the basic operators, the and, the or, the not features within search. Most of today's conversation will be surrounded around Google searching. Uh, I will also touch on Bing and, other, and towards the end some other engines to use. Uh, but predominantly, a lot of this is, is we all use the Google the most, I would say, is, is a, an audience. <clears throat> but this, these operators are not exclusive to Google. They will be able to use cross-platformed. So to start off, we are going to focus on the why and the how. So when you look at Boolean search, remember, it is a mathematical formula, right? So the and is a, is a plus. The or um, is, is a way that you're able to fluctuate between areas. The not would be a minus button in in a loose term, very easy to, to put together, um, very basic search terms. And then as we go along, we'll get a little bit more complex in how we go. To begin, the AND operator, anytime that you type into a search engine, just words. So if you want to go see a movie 
and you type in uh, local movie theater to see the Lego movie, right? No ands, no ors, nothing. You just type all that in. It will just read it, all the spaces, as an automatic and. As you can see at the very bottom, you'll see some gray arrows in between that there's automatically an inferred and in there. You can write and, we can write the plus button, or you can just use spaces as you do a search. All three are acceptable, and we'll pull results. Up here in the corner, we're doing senior and network and engineer and Cisco. And these are the results that were pulled back from my, from my page as I went. So it was just a good way to explain this right off the bat. <clears throat> a lot of these are right in here, maybe not in the exact same order, but they're all showing up. So that gives me off to a very good search. I know at least I'm starting off on the right track. The OR operator, the OR word may be typed in as OR, or you may use the pipe symbol, which is the vertical line. Uh, to get the vertical line, you may use the shift and backslash key, which is right above the enter key on your keyboard if you're not, if you're not aware of that. Uh, this is used to widen your search. Okay, so looking at the same thing, if we're using the same senior or network or engineer or Cisco, what's going to come back are vastly different results. The results that are coming back are strictly towards one word, predominantly Cisco. You're looking at the Cisco website, you're looking at products, you're looking at the word engineer on Wikipedia, you're looking at a networking academy on LinkedIn on, on, and on Facebook. It's picking one word and pulling the most popular results back. That is the vast difference between the two. The and is looking to include every word. The or is I will use any one of those four words and be happy with it. And those are the results that we're pulling back. Vastly different use. The not operator. This is a way to narrow your search. Many of us, and we'll go through some further examples, use it if we're trying to avoid job boards when looking for resumes. Uh, but one of the, the great tools is to limit the positives, right? So I put in here, uh, it helps to limit the false positives. So resume not submit, not apply as it's written does not mean, as you will see in the example, does not mean those, in, those will not show up. What it does is it tries to limit those results in your search, okay? So do not think that just by writing not submit, not apply, that that's going to eliminate all of those from your result. It means it's gonna do its best to limit those results. As you can see here, network, engineer, not network, not VP, not director. Okay, so right now, we, a lot of what is coming up is exactly what we're looking for, is like exactly the engineering and what we're, what we're looking for in these areas on dictionary, on Twitter, et cetera. Okay, but now if we expand it and are looking for resumes, so we look at engineer and resume, not network, not VP, not director, not submit, not apply, you can see that false positives are showing up especially the VP is, is coming through here. So engineering is consistent. Resume is consistent because on job boards, you're looking to submit your resume. So those two are definitely coming through. The area that is not being limited right off the bat is the submit or apply button, as you can see, because of Indeed or Monster, Job Hero. That's, so that means that this is a good starting point for a search, but we need to build upon it and refine it a little more. Do not think that every search that you come up with is the end-all, be-all. You need to take time and play with it. I know time is one of those aspects of recruiters that everybody says, you know, I have, I have a ton of jobs I have to work on. I don't have a lot of time to do this. This is one of the areas with, with Boolean search, you need to spend a little bit more time in trying to fine-tune that search string to help you over and over again and build off of that. And now it is time, uh, Deb, if we can open this back up. Now it is time for our second poll. Yep, absolutely. So the quick poll question is, is this your first time learning about how to use and, or, and not in search? So select yes or no.
And Hubert, can we see the results? Not surprising here, uh, but 82%, nope, this is not my first time learning how to use and, or, or not, but I'm also glad to see that there are 18% of you that feel that this is the first time that you're learning this, so I'm glad that you're going to get a lot out of this particular training today. Keith, back Excellent. to you. Great, thank you. Excellent. Okay, so this is, this is good. So it's a refresher for some of you, and for some of you it's brand new information. So as we go along, hopefully there's some more that we can add into this. The next is going to be the parentheses operator. The parentheses operator is also known as nesting, and it's how we can structure different areas. On this page, you can see three examples. Engineer parent and parentheses, stress or design, and parentheses. Parentheses, stress or design, and parentheses, and engineer. And lastly, engineer and parentheses, stress or design, and parentheses. What these, all three of these searches are doing is they are looking for the word engineer and either stress or design. So ultimately, we're looking for a stress engineer or a design engineer. But the way that these are written, you're going to come back with different results. Okay, so by having engineer at the front, you're saying the engineer is the most important, whereas it has the most weight. Whereas if you put stress or design at the front, that has the most weight of your search. So a few examples. If we look for engineer and stress or design, we're coming back with a lot more engineering focused results. Okay, and all of these you can see that there's design, there's Instagram, there's how, so there's all sorts of different areas that are coming back with this. If we look for stress or design and engineer, these are all brand new results. So the green arrows are showing that these are all brand new results that are coming back for different areas. A lot of job boards, uh, Wikipedia, pay scale, but it's giving you a little bit more focus on that. So that, that's a very good thing. Okay, so I'm going to go back. So this is a little or. The first example, stress and little or design. And then I'm doing the same search, engineer and stress or design with the capital or. And you can see that there's actually some different results that come in. There's three results that are, are similar, and, or excuse me, two that are similar and three that are brand, uh, I'm going to get this mixed up. Red, bad. We've seen those before. Green, good. These are brand new. So these are areas that we are able to start ex examining. So as we're restructuring our search, we are able to find and refine and get new results. So using, um, I did use the pipe for OR, and I actually got the exact same results that are showing up here. So by switching the, either the big OR or the little OR for the pipe symbol, we'll bring you back the exact same results that I'm showing you on this page. And next we're going to move on to the quotation modifier. The quotation modifier groups words in an exact phrase. The example we're going to use here is stress design engineer. The first example is stress and design and engineer. So the search will come back with all three words, not necessarily all in the same area, but all three words on a page. If we look at open quote stress design engineer end quote we are looking for that exact phrase on a page here's one example if we're looking for stress and design engineer a lot of jobs come back if we look for quote stress design engineer end quote there are going to be some duplications right indeed shows up glassdoor uk shows up but there's some new ones there's some there's uh different jobs in different locations in uh, Indian Jora there's another glass store that showed up here's an oil one oil job search so there's different areas so by playing with the quotations and adding those in it allowed us to open up our search results and get a larger number wild cards wild cards are are fun and can be a little tricky to play with we have the tilde, the asterisk, the multiple periods, and the multiple asterisks. All right, and so these are used to represent a specific word. Now, please note as we look at this, the tilde is not available in Google. You cannot use this in Google. It will not work, um, but we're going to talk about this first. 
The tilde is, is looking for synonyms in front of the term. Again, not in Google. If we look at, we're looking for a resume and electrical and engineer. If we put the tilde in front of resume, that means we are looking for similarities. Resume, curriculum vitae, or, or CV. We'll replace that word, okay? And it, and it goes along with that, all right? So you can create different samples. As you can see, we have four different examples here of what we're looking for in cover letters in different areas. Now, if you run this, so as you can see, I chose to run this on Bing, and I had the, the tilde resume electrical and engineer, not template, not sample, not cover letter, not indeed, not in EDU. Okay, now, what is coming back are a lot of resume templates. Again, the not symbol tries to limit those results. Cover letter tries to limit, the not tries to limit. It does not eliminate, it limits. These websites have probably have a higher carrying number uh, and more popularity, which is why they're still showing up. Again, this is a search you would need to play with to identify and try and eliminate some of those areas and really delve a little bit deeper into. Okay. The next operator is the asterisk. So this is when you don't know about a word. If you're not sure, if you're looking for a, um, a, a software engineer as the example, but you might be looking for a software lead engineer or a software design engineer. You're not really sure what that is, but you know it's a software engineer and you're kind of open to what somebody might call themselves, especially in a title, okay? If we were to run this with the asterisk, you can see it's coming back and it's pretty much pulling exactly software engineer. But as you play with this a little bit more, you add other keywords in, it's going to expand the search a little bit beyond that. So really look at this as, this is again a very basic search. And because of that, it's going to limit our, our results and, and be a little bit more focused on what we're looking for. But it's going to open the door and, and expand. So again, just showing you where that asterisk may come in. And with that, this takes us to our third poll question. Deb, over to you. Absolutely. So the third poll question is, which of the following, uh, the most targeted Boolean string? So which of the following is the most targeted Boolean search string? Coordinator, asterisk, clinic medic support office bilingual. Coordinator, clinic or medic support office bilingual or coordinator, clinic, or medic, support, or office, bilingual. Voting starts now. And Hubert, has polling stopped? Okay, so by popular vote, um, all of you, or 65% of you, feel that coordinator, parentheses, clinic or medic, parentheses, support or office, bilingual, was the most targeted Boolean search string, followed by coordinator, asterisk, clinic or medic, or support or office or bilingual, and then finally, 15% of coordinator, parentheses, clinic or medic, and parentheses, parentheses, support or office or bilingual. So Keith, number three was the most popular. Number three was the most popular, and I don't have the result. For, I believe number three was the, the correct answer, if I'm going off of memory. I think you're right. Absolutely. That I think, okay, thank you. <laughs> I was trying to listen through that, so I think that's the right way. So by using the parentheses in here, it allows you to really delve in and, and get the most qualified and refined search. Great. Now we're going to move on to some other operators. Okay, so we're going to use the two decimal operator. This is used to find numbers within a specific range. Okay, so if you're looking for zip codes within a certain area, if you're looking for years, 
um, is a great way to use years. If you are looking for somebody who graduated from a university, uh, if you want somebody who graduated from Penn State University between the years of 1993 and 1998, you could do 1993 dot dot 1998 no spaces, but you can enter those in there and you could look for that. So if you're looking for somebody, as I know we all have these requisitions out there, if we want somebody who had graduated, you know, between five and ten years ago and has between five and ten years of experience, a great way is to look, start looking for degrees. You can type in, you know, BS degree, um, masters, et cetera, and you could have, and you could start targeting in on the years of graduation, and those and those numbers will show up. So you don't have to write 1993, 1994, 1995. By the dot dot, it will already insinuate every number in in between that. So if you wanted somebody who graduated in the 90s, you could do. 1990 dot dot 1999 and anybody who who graduated in those years or showed up will will be on that resume so that's really what we're looking for in this it's a great way to start narrowing down especially in that i use it a lot for zip code search and i also use it a lot for uh graduation years and experience for specific schools okay in this case what i've done is i've looked at 18040.19087 for software and engineer, not resume, not template, not sample, not jobs. And, and the results that came back, um, as you can see on here, were actually all reference numbers for jobs. So it would be as if it was coming out of an ATS. And that's the job number that was, was linked to that job, which I found a little interesting. I ran a second search. Same thing. I just, I'm going to go back. The resume has a tilde on it, okay? So I wanted to show this. So in Google, we use the resume tilde on it, and this is what came back. If I took the tilde off, what happened here is I got more resumes, all right? So I, I, you know, some of these may be a little bit more generic, and they may take me to other areas. But by taking that off, it opened my search and got a little bit different. So I wanted to show the difference between using a tilde incorrectly and, using, and not using it at all in Google and showing what comes back for you. So very, you know, very interesting result to see how that plays out. Now we're going to move on to in title and in URL in your search. Now we're getting a little bit more, you know, some of these operators um, are very helpful. Now we're getting into some that are going to be very, very helpful in, in my opinion, okay? So the end title is looking for the title of a web page, okay? So the title of a movie is Star Wars, right? And that, that you know exactly what that is. But if I look at the URL, the URL for that website would be www.starwars.com. So it is allowing me to look at the title of the web page, as well as the link on the web page and the URL. And that's why this is so great. Example here, in title resume or in URL resume and engineer and either stress or design, right? And then you have to remember to put on some of those false positives in the end to try and limit your search. Here is the example without the false positives. Okay, so it's the exact same search string. We're looking in the title or in the URL for resume and engineer and either stress or design. So right here, we're getting a little bit more sample resumes, right? I mean, it's, it's taking us to the, the right path, but it's not giving us exactly what we need. But by entering those false positives, it's given a little bit more area. So now it's kind of a resume template, some samples and and testimonials for, for um, a resume builder, but it starts to narrow down some of those. So again, playing with the false positives are not going to be always be an exact way, but it's going to open up different results for you and try and eliminate some of those websites. So instead of taking you to job boards, it's taking you to other, other avenues, kind of similar, but something to build off of. You are also able to look for a file type, right? So online there are all sorts of documents. They could be Word documents, rich tef, PDFs, um, you know, Adobe Power, uh, PowerPoints, Excel spreadsheets. 
so many different areas where people are just uploading their documents that are completely searchable online, right? A great example of this is how to put all of this together. So we're kind of coming to the end of, of all the basics and some of the little bit more, you know, as we're going up in difficulty with the parentheses and everything. So step one, we want to look for in the title or in the URL a resume. Step two, we want to look for sales, pharmaceutical, and either Merck or Pfizer. And so the tilde is not going to work in this case, but I leave it in there because I want you to remember this will also work in Bing and Yahoo and other, other areas. So do not think the tilde is in there. It's, it's in there for a purpose. And then step three, we have job sample. We're not looking for job. We're not looking for sample. All right. So if we put all of that together, Okay, what's coming back? So we have a, a couple jobs. You know, the first, the first four results are going playing right into our false positive of jobs, right? But then we hit five and six. We we now have resumes. This is a fantastic way for us to be able to start building off of this. And as you can see, we went from really basic in the beginning to a little bit more complex now. And now we're starting to get the results that we're looking for. We want the resumes. We want to start getting contact information and finding people this way. Okay? You're also able to look for extensions. Do not think that looking for .com is the only way to do it. I have, a, I have an account that I support where they are looking for individuals with security clearances. Well, some of the best sites to go to end in .gov for government sites. Right? So between if it's a company, if it's a dot, uh, .com, or if it's a dot .gov, it's going to lead me a little bit more to those areas. Know your different country codes as well. So if, if you are in India and you're doing a search, you're going to type in, you know, dot .in is a lot of for Indian countries or Brazil. You're able to go and do searches for country extensions. And every country has different extensions around the world. If you're looking for a specific country, do not think that just, you know, .com or just looking at everything, using those extensions, those country extensions, will help narrow down immensely. If you're looking for schools, you want to use .edu. Most colleges and universities have those, the .edu's, you know, they're, they're universities that have a paid, you know, kind of a, a tech school, if you will. So it's a great way to add those into your searches. Okay, there's also some more complex, which we're not, I'm going to bring up. Uh, I'm not really going to dive too deep into these today. There's the site search, which is also x-ray, which is how you really delve into a specific website, right? It's not searching the web. It's searching a website and trying to find specific links within that. For example, IBM.com, if you let's think about that's W3 when you're doing that, in essence, that's what you're doing. You are doing a site search within IBM for information. The link search, right? It's going to take you to different, different points or links that it's taking you to that targeted site. So if you're looking for a, a targeted site, but maybe other websites are directing you over to it, it will pull those back as well. And then lastly, the related search, which is if you can look at the image on the left side of the screen, if you're looking up Zappos, Google already starts to share relations with it. So Nordstrom, Zappos VIP, DSW, it kind of understands you're looking for shoes most likely. And these are the most popular shoes that people are looking for when they're doing it, and it's pulling back those types of results. So it's giving you a related search to what you're looking at. There's a lot of, of this. So as you start typing in different searches, Start looking at that drop down because that means other people have used that similar type of a search before, and they're, if Google is recommending, or Bing, or Yahoo, or other sites, they are recommending different words to add in to try and help you. They may be right, they may be wrong, but it's giving you a recommendation. Okay, so again, the, the site search. All right, if we're looking at this, so if I want to look at LinkedIn, okay, and I'm, I'm going to look at in URL, so the site is only going to be in LinkedIn. It's going to be the in URL pub, which is public, or in, 
which is going to be looking at profiles. I don't want to see uh, in, in the title directory, I don't want to see a list, uh, but you can add in different keywords and locations. Okay, so this is actually one that um, I did not do an example of, but it kind of gives you a little bit more of a focus just for LinkedIn. What's the nice part about that? It means you don't necessarily need to have a full recruiter, LinkedIn recruiter license to pull back those results, right? It's going to pull back all sorts of different areas. So if you do not have a full recruiter seat, this might be a, a, a good way, this, this site dot, uh, colon LinkedIn.com and in URL pub for public or in URL in, not in title directory, and start entering your keywords, enter a job title, and then enter a location to help narrow down your results. So it could be, you know, United States. It could be Pennsylvania. You know, you, you can start narrowing it down that way as well. Okay, but you can also, I, uh, the example I chose on this page was to start looking at YouTube. So if I wanted to look at YouTube for a video resume for a J2EE developer, it's going to do this. this, this so I did a site colon youtube.com video resume J2EE developer. And what came back was sample resumes, was the third one down here of Kunal Vidaya was a web developer. Right. And there's other examples. The first one's a little bit more of a, uh, a service that helps you create those video. But all of them. The nice part about YouTube is people post videos of various topics that they're interested in. It probably means they, they know something about. Most people are going to publish something that they know about. So if you start looking for engineers, if you're looking for Maybe even something as simple as, as people, you know, accountants who are good with Excel, you know, you can start looking for Excel tut tutorials, et cetera. Those people might know people. It's a great way to start networking. You can find names of people. You can find the companies that are posting those videos and building off of. Again, it's a little bit more of a search, but it starts leading you down those holes that are going to get you to people who know what you're looking for. The link search. So again, going back in, if you're looking within a specific link, in this case we were looking at Microsoft as the example. Anything, so the link search is looking specifically within this URL, within the www.microsoft.com. So the example, link, colon, Microsoft.com employee profile, and right here, everything that's coming back, Microsoft.com, Microsoft.com, everything coming down is all within Microsoft. Okay, there's a template for an employee database. You can start trying to dig through and play in some of these areas. It tries to open doors for you within different areas. Many companies back in the, uh, the good old days, many companies had their directories, their, their corporate directories, not behind a firewall. You could do a search similar like to this and just find everything. Now, most companies are moving them behind firewalls, but you can still go out there and find maybe some, even some older information on companies to go through and, and find, or maybe even list some of their employees on their website as subject matter experts. Okay. Biggest things to remember, incorporate these daily. Okay, this just has to be a part of your routine. routine. Even if it's you're taking 15, 20, 30 minutes a day, if you have more time, even better to try and, and, and open up some of those paths. But these are all ways when your managers are coming and saying, what are you doing to expand your, your candidate pipeline, right? Most recruiters are not necessarily saying, oh, I've done this Boolean search, I've done this Boolean search. Make sure you're incorporating these. Also, keep a, I recommend keeping an Excel spreadsheet for yourself. So that way you're able to look at all sorts of different Boolean searches you run before. So you're not recreating the wheel every single time you get a job. You can say, oh, you know what, I ran this before. And you can go back and look it up and, and pull it out. Okay, these are just things that really help. And the reason I say that is this bottom example, attendee and list and file type, Excel, and arrow structures. Okay, this result, I just, I just wanted to see, and, and we did this, we've done this actually a few years ago, and it's been a fantastic example. Okay, pulls back all sorts of Excel spreadsheets. So as you look at the results in front of every single result in, in, a, in a parenthesis is XLS. These are all Excel spreadsheets, every single one of these. 
And if I open the very first result right at the very top there, I got this. I got an entire spreadsheet of people's names. First, last, their agency, title, their address, where they live, their phone number. And if you scroll to, the, if you're able to scroll to the right, I would have gotten a fax number and their email address. All on this. This is an attendee list. This is, this is pure. So if you're looking for different positions, different areas, if you're looking for conferences, if you're looking for potentially uh, organizations, associations that might have meetings, they might post users online, this is a great way to start trying to dive into that data and extract it. Okay, again, consider multiple channels. Don't just rely on Google. I know my presentation was probably 99% you know, Google is what I showed you. But what happens on Google is not necessarily what you get on Bing or Yahoo. There's other sites like Outwit, which is a free and a paid service. They have different levels of it. There's Exalead, which is a little bit more of a, a broader search engine. Remember, as we're going to talk in future trainings about Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, Follower Wonk allows you to look at that for, for Twitter. LinkedIn, I know everybody is probably, probably using to some extent in your searches already, right? But Exalead, what it does is it goes out and it starts pulling. So and you can look at the very top here, systems and engineer and resume, not submit, not apply, not jobs. And it's coming back with some different video, you know, different resume samples, et cetera. This is a great tool to start searching multiple results, multiple websites, uh, multiple search engines as well. Okay. Lastly, you can write the greatest search string and it can not work for you. So the example, I'm not going to read through the entire thing, but you can see it's a very lengthy Boolean string I put together and I put it in Google. And at the very bottom in the, under the, uh, above the red line, from the word manager and any subsequent words were ignored because Google limits their search queries to 32 words. So if you count out all of these areas, all four, it's almost four complete lines, all the way down to analyst, all of those words are being searched for. But from manager on is being completely ignored. So remember, you need to make sure, and when you're putting this together, be very cognizant over how many words, how long you're, you're using all of these areas, um, how long you're using every single word, how many words are going into it, you know. So you may have to, in this case, I may have to create three or four or five search strings in order to include every word in red. Okay, again, something to play around with, tweak, and, and help to narrow down. Okay, other ideas. Really, get, you know, I have to get creative, like the Lego light bulb here, right? You, you really need to get creative. You have a ton of options at your fingertips. It's how you put them together and how you use them, okay? So use local regional organizations, diversity organizations, communities, different groups, which I know many of you already are, are talking about and doing uh, LinkedIn groups, Facebook groups, especially for geographies, um, you know, internal networks, all sorts of different areas that we can look at, right? You can look at different common organizational affiliations. Um, so from the common one, you're able to look at, you know, from a diversity network and go through and start targeting individuals in those areas. I know diversity initiatives are, are becoming, you know, quite increasingly focused. So something to keep thinking about. And then, you know, look at different resources. You know, do different searches for, uh, you know, example, the third one, 21 women, women's organizations you need to know, um, or top diversity companies, right? Great companies to start targeting and looking at. So making sure you're doing that, making sure you're, you're asking for advice and, and partnering with somebody. Um, you can always, I'm always happy to help, but you have sourcing executives on your accounts. Um, I'll always feel free, you know, to, to really reach out to us and utilize us and, and we'll help you with those search strings. We'll get you going in the right directions and, and really, you know, looking at those areas. Um, so we're going to close now with our final poll question of the day. Deb, will turn it over. Thank you, Keith. All right, so let's switch applies. This is all old information. Thanks for the review. <laughs> Picked up new tricks that I was not familiar with before. 
holy moly, this is all new, awesome. So select which one applies to your thoughts and feelings about today's training. Well, I know Keith, uh, I had, uh, some of this of course is old information, but it, the review is always good and I always forget about the file type. <laughs> <laughs> It's always, I know, it's underused and it's very powerful, so. Yeah. Okay, so 69% um, said, I picked up new tricks that I was not familiar before today. 24% uh, said, holy moly, this is new, awesome. And 7% felt this was old information, but thanked us for the review. Great, okay. Well, I'm glad. So... Thank you for your time. So you now, may now applause. You survived this training class. So <laughs> congratulations to all of you for making it through. Um, and with that, I have my information on here. If there are questions, I'm more than happy to answer anything for you. But uh, Deb will open it up if there are any questions. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Keith, so much for the training. Uh, we're going to open up to Q&A. You can pose your question in the chat function of the GoToWebinar screen in front of you. Uh, so go ahead and send me whatever questions you'd like me to, um, you know, share with Keith and get some additional answers. Uh, one of the questions I had, Keith, I know that you had done a lot of uh, not sample, not job, not um, uh, got template. Uh, would, would it make sense to also include not samples, not templates, and not jobs? Absolutely, yeah. So as you're going through these searches and you're finding some of those words that are showing up and it's taking you to the wrong areas, absolutely start adding those in to limit the false positives. Um, again, it's an ongoing test of what's going to work and what's not going to work. What may work today might bring you back different results tomorrow, uh, just based upon what you're searching and what different algorithms are changing. Um, so you definitely keep playing with that. Add as many in as you want. Um, I find that the, actually, I actually find the more false positives you add, the more difficult it is to limit those. So I try and look at what are the most uh, most popular ones that are showing up in my search, and then I, I play with those. Okay, great. Uh, another question that came through was, is there a way to harden the not function so that it will il actually eliminate um, like words and phrases. Unfortunately, no. Uh, those will always there will always be examples of those showing up uh, because it's only a limitation. It's not a definitive. Um, that's why the more that you're able to do, again, you you probably using three or four is probably a little closer to the magic number of what you want to try and limit. Uh, you can do more. It may or may not work. Again, play with your, your examples. But no, you're not able to say, okay, if I don't want uh, not jobs to eliminate every job, or that's just not going to, that, that won't work. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. And uh, there's been a few questions about whether or not these slides would be available. We did record today's uh, training um, and we can definitely send you the slides so we'll just have to do a little digging in terms of uh, uh, all the emails I'm sure that I could work with uh, the folks over in the learning department to make sure that these slides get out to everybody any other additional questions no, we have one more I think and someone's typing, <clears throat> and that is it for now, <laughs> so no questions. Keith, again, thank you so much for sharing uh, Boolean Basics today. Um, again, we'll be having additional, uh, more advanced Boolean training coming soon. Uh, the next one will focus on social networks, using Boolean strings on social networks. I did uh, want to also note that there was a request for a training on Chrome extensions. So. I might do the Chrome extension one first and then the Boolean search uh, on social networks second. Uh, and maybe there's a way that we can combine the two together. We'll see how much time we have for uh, both those partic particular trainings. So again, thank you guys for joining us today. And uh, we'll be sending out uh, new training um, you know, shortly for you guys to all enroll. And 
It'll be in November. So again, thank you guys, and thank you, Keith, uh, uh, for you know obviously training us today. Have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, and evening.